Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of plane and descriptive geometry. In this video we're going to use some of the principles that we've seen in our previous videos and we're going to apply them to a, um, a fairly common um, geometry question. That is how to use a known dihedral angle to locate a missing point in our primary views. So we'll begin by first of all looking at the question itself. Here we can see the question and um, we can see the setup for a number of points A, B, C and D of which we're given the coordinates. Um, but you can see that when setting them up, we're missing one of the coordinates. That is the height of point D here. So we have D completed in plan, but we're missing point D up in elevation. We're also told that we have the dihedral angle between the two surfaces and that it's 170 degrees. Now the question asks us to complete the projections of the surface. Completing the projections means basically complete the elevation and plan. So in this case here we're missing our point in elevation so that's really what the question says to complete the front elevation. Um, just looking at what we have at the moment we know that point D is here and we know that if we project him straight up D must be located somewhere along here in elevation we're just missing the height. So really it boils down to finding the height of D1 here like so. Um, the approach we're going to take when it comes to solving it is we're going to go and continue the process to find the dihedral angle and then we're going to work backwards from that. So to find the dihedral angle we know from our previous video that you have to first of all, well you have to see the line of intersection as a point view and in order to see the line of intersection as a point view you must first of all look along a true length line of it. So in our question here the line CB is our line of intersection and we can see from our elevation and plan we don't have it as a true length line in either of our primary views. So that's going to be our first thing to do to find the line CB as a true length line. Uh, we know that how to do that is to look along or look perpendicular to it so look straight in at it and project onto a auxiliary plane x1 y1 which is perpendicular to our line of sight or parallel to our line itself. So we're going to project our points that we do know and I want to project D along here and I'm just going to mark him in, in a little dot because we don't know where he stops at the moment. We're also going to apply our 1-2 rule um, to locate our heights. So our 1-2 rule says that to locate the heights for this view we go back two views, one view, two views, so to our elevation and we go back to our previous XY line. So this is the X1, Y1 line we're dealing with at the moment. The XY line is our line that we're going to measure from. So we're going to take our heights from our elevation to the XY line and transfer them across here. So that will allow us to complete our first plane A, B and C. Uh, we don't have any height for D so we're not able to transfer D along here so we still have to find that in this view. So, But that gives us our true length of our line of intersection. So we're able to look along that line of intersection then and project it or see it as a point. So we look along it or parallel to it like so. Our X2, Y2 line is going to be perpendicular to our line of sight and we're going to project the points that we do have. Um, again, applying our one to rule, we're going to go back one view, two views back to our plan view and our previous XY line in this example is this XY line here. So that's going to give us the distances that we need here to transfer into our auxiliary. So that allows us to see a point view of our line of intersection and the surface ABC as an edge view. So this is the view where we would normally see or expect to see our dihedral angle uh, marked in. We expect to see the surface C, D and B as a single line or as an edge. Now knowing from the question that the dihedral angle is 170 degrees we're actually able to put that in and mark what would be the edge view of that surface. So there's where the edge view of that surface would be. Um, that is say C, B and D. Now we don't know where it stops at the moment but if we go and apply our one to rule really the height of where point D should be if we go back one view two views well we actually do have that distance so that distance here can be transferred across over here to this view we draw a line parallel with the X to Y2 that's our distance from our X to Y2 and that would actually locate as point D in this view. So we're able to tie our views together to locate our missing point. So now we have D in our um, 
plan view and in our second auxiliary and we're able to work backwards from that. So having it in our second auxiliary we're able to project it back into our first auxiliary in, li in line with our line of sight that we projected our points up originally and we can see where that crosses our dashed line here locates as our point D2 in our plan view or sorry our first auxiliary. So that gives us the completed surface. And again, applying our one to rule, we're looking to find our front elevation. So if we count back one views, two views, um, well, this view is actually now completed. So we can take this measurement here and we can mark that off to locate our height in our first, uh, our front elevation. So that gives us our point D1 and that completes the surface. Um, it's probably worthwhile mentioning here at this stage that I have marked my 170 degrees in like so I could have marked it on the underside here like this but that would give me a, a different point which would come back here which would give me a different point here along my line like so which would mean that D1 would be up higher so how we know if you're going to be right or wrong in that case would depend on whether the surface is bending out 170 degrees or bending in 170 degrees and really the way to determine which is correct would be to look at say your 3D graphic or the example that you would be given um, in the question itself so that's it could be either one and um, it would depend on the uh, the 3D graphic so that's the way you'd tell one way or the other and um, the next thing I'm going to do is just do exactly the same thing only this time we're going to be missing our point D in our plan view so we have the front elevation completed to start with and we're missing the depth down um, for point D in plan view. So like before, D is located here. He's located somewhere here in our plan view. And the way it works is that our original view to project our first auxiliary is going to be the completed view. So instead of working from the plan this time, this time I'm going to work from the front elevation. So with the exact same process, I'm going to take my line of intersection. No, I don't have it as a true length in either view. So I'm going to need to find the true length of it by looking in perpendicular to it, projecting onto a parallel x1, y1 line, and using my one, two rule to get my height. So one, two, like so. That will give me the true length of my line of intersection and the completed surface A, B and C. I'm going to also continue D along here like so. I don't know where he's going to be at the moment, but I do know he's along this line. Having the true length line of our line of intersection, I'm going to look parallel to it, projecting onto a plane perpendicular to it, and we're going to project our lines in line with our line of sight. Again, using our one, two rule, counting back one, two, I'm going to take my distances from my x1, y1 line to my front elevation, giving me an edge view of the surface and a point view of the line of intersection, ready to put in my dihedral angle. So there's my 170 degrees, like so. And I'm going to take my distance again from my back two views, one view, two views. So my distance here gets transferred, locating me point D3 here in my second auxiliary. Um, again, like we mentioned the last time, you could have put in your 170 there at that, and what would make the difference there, again, would be how the object looks in your 3D graphic. So I'm going to take my known point D3, like so, I'm going to project it back, and where it crosses our dotted line here is going to locate it in our first, first elevation, and then we're going to be able to take our distances from our first elevation and transfer them to plan. Exactly the same way we did for H1 here, there's H1 from our plan. This time H4 is going to be transferred down into our plan view here and where it meets our dotted line like so. We know D is somewhere along this line, we just didn't know the depth. Now we do. So that completes B, C and D in our plan view. So they're the two scenarios that you could be likely to face uh, with that type of question. Um, as I say, it really borrows from um, the idea of what is the dihedral angle and how do we work our one, two rule or how do we get our heights for each of our auxiliaries. So hopefully this has been of some use to you and stay tuned to the rest of the videos for more information. Thank you very much.